Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 16th of January. James Spann here, kind of a cloudyish day with a few sprinkles around. We'll check out some of the Skycam shots around the Alpha Skycam network this afternoon. We'll start with you coming from Mount Cheeha. That's from atop the restaurant at Cheeha State Park. And by golly, they had a few ice pellets up there. Sleet was falling for a while this morning, even with surface, temp surface temperatures around 50. And the reason for that, the evaporative cooling process as precipitation was falling through a very dry layer in the lower part of the atmosphere. And that's a cooling process, and that helped to create those little ice pellets, but uh, those are long gone. That's the uh, Fayette Sky Cam up in northwest Alabama and from Walker County. That's the sky over Parrish, south of Jasper at 2 o'clock. There's our trough in the west that will be advancing this way. So there's high clouds streaming in here in advance of that. But look at those numbers. Hard to believe we had some sleet in parts of Alabama this morning. We're up there in the low and mid-60s at 2 o'clock. Uh, 64 in Tuscaloosa, Montgomery, Columbus, Mississippi, Memphis at 66. And around the nation, got that surge of warm air coming up into parts of Missouri. But look at the cold air up on the Canadian border. It's below zero at midday up on the uh, northern Montana border with Canada. And we'll catch a quick pop of that cold air Wednesday, but again, it's going to be a quick hitter like they have all been this season. Here's our watch warning map. Uh, most of the winter storm issues are up in the northwest. Uh, Washington State, a lot of snow there. Parts of Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Snow for parts of the Colorado Rockies. And also some snow in parts of uh, interior New England this evening. All right, severe weather possibilities. This is the convective outlook for the rest of today and tonight. Just a 5% chance of any uh, severe weather within 25 miles of a given point over parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and Illinois. That does not warrant a slight risk. And the same thing tomorrow. Uh, there's no formal risk, just those low-end probabilities over all of Mississippi, Alabama, parts of Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana. And again, we'll talk about the specifics of any severe weather threat here in just a moment. And the QPF chart. This is the rain for the next five days, valid through Saturday morning at 6 o'clock, suggesting rain amounts of about one inch here, maybe a bit over that in spots. Uh, I think maybe not quite that much. It just depends on where the stronger storms develop. Where there's a stronger storm, yes, you might get an inch tomorrow, but a lot of folks uh, will get one half inch. And actually, we'll probably have another round of showers Friday night, and that uh, takes that into account as well. All right, this is the uh, GFS, the 12Z run, valid at noon tomorrow at 500 millibars. The uh, trough that was over the west is shearing out and lifting out. The really serious energy is north of here, and accordingly, the surface low is near Detroit and Windsor up on the Canadian border. Very cold air coming in behind that, and uh, we'll have uh, showers and storms here uh, tomorrow. We'll check the RPM. This is at 5 o'clock tomorrow evening. The surface front at that point should be from near Athens down to about Hamilton. And the rain will be ending behind that. And really, you don't see any serious convection showing up there. And uh, as usual, the limiting factor here in January, it's the lack of surface-based instability. This is the CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. And the numbers are generally under 500 joules. Uh, just to give an example, on April 27th, the instability was over 4,000 joules. But the uh, shear numbers, you know, they're on up there. This is the uh, zero to one kilometer helicity. And, uh, you know, that's uh, over 200 units over Alabama. And that's certainly supportive of rotating updrafts. There's the energy helicity index. And it peaks at about a one around Tuscaloosa. And, ooh, look at here now. This is the STP. The significant tornado parameter, anything over a one is significant. And uh, by golly, we've got numbers over two uh, running along and south of Interstate 59. This is tomorrow evening at uh, six o'clock. So I'm telling you, these are problematic. You know, and I remind everybody, you know, last week we had an EF2 tornado in western North Carolina with a similar setup. Very low cape and high shear. So surprises can happen. So we'll just be paying very close attention to the radar tomorrow afternoon. Wednesday, rain is gone. The sky clears. We turn colder. Now, tomorrow will be way up in the upper 60s, but on Wednesday, highs in the upper 40s, about a 20-degree drop with a chilly north wind. There's Thursday. We'll start the day pretty cold. Lows should be in the 20s, but the high Thursday afternoon will go right back in the upper 50s. We warm up in a hurry, and at the end of the week on Friday, 
We'll be up there probably in the low 60s. Moisture comes back, and this is suggesting maybe a shower Friday afternoon. This is Friday night at midnight. We look wet with an impulse coming by. And then Saturday at midday, the rain is moving out. Now, let's look at the European at midday Saturday, and again, it's slower. It's still got a pretty good bit of rain in here, so we're going to mention a chance of showers and maybe a thunderstorm Friday night and Saturday uh, for now. It might be Saturday morning, might be out of here by midday, but if the European is right, uh, we'll better mention a chance of rain through much of the day Saturday. Of course, we'll be mild with thickness values like that, highs up in the 60s, and Sunday, this run wants to leave lingering moisture pooled up in here in the low levels. And if this is right, Sunday would be kind of a cloudyish, very mild and balmy day. Maybe a shower in spots and a high up around 70. So I, I think we'll lean in that direction. Here's the European on Sunday, and it's got the same idea. Moisture kind of trapped in the low levels around here and very mild with that thickness ridge over us. So uh, Sunday, 70 clouds, maybe a shower, not much rain. Monday of next week. We'll still be very mild again, kind of cloudy, chance of showers. Tuesday of next week, the 24th, ooh, look at that trough coming at us. Down below that, a really wound up cyclone over northern Wisconsin, below Duluth, Minnesota, 992 millibars. Very cold air streaming in behind that, and that might suggest kind of a storm for us uh, that night. And then on Wednesday, the 25th, it's gone, and no cold air. It stays north of us. We'll check the end of the forecast the 1st of February. Woo, boy, time is flying. And again, cold air, forget it. We got a big ridge poking up there up toward uh, Hudson Bay. And if that's right, it would be relatively mild. And you know what we're going to say until the pattern changes. Um, we're not going to see any long-lasting cold snaps, and that certainly does not look cold as we start that new month. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 4 o'clock I'm sorry, 4 o'clock, 7, not 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you are local to us, we invite you to watch us on ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Need a new clock in here. Uh, that's it for the Weather Extreme video. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.